All right. So now I'm going to hand it over to Thomas to discuss the X57 Maxwell demonstration. Okay, thank you. Uh, let me just share my screen. All right, uh, can you see my screen? All right, uh, so I'm just going to... Oh. How do I fix this? All right, there we go. So uh, I'm going to be doing a kind of a live walkthrough of how to create a, a model in Structure Studio. And uh, I just wanted to go through basically before before I do that live, an overview of what I'll be doing. Uh, so the first step is to uh, import an open VSP vehicle into uh, M4 Structure Studio. Then you're, I'm going to lay out uh, sketch points uh, on the open VSP model or on the OML. Uh, and then once that's done, you initialize the sketch model. And that's kind of the main uh, model in M4 Structure Studio where the user will have to define all the uh, 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 components via cards. So those cards are you know, material and property cards, structural cards, uh, arrow cards, uh, optimization cards. And then uh, once you've defined all your components, uh, you then create you then specify how all those components will be merged together. And you do that with merge cards. Uh, and then you can make uh, all the analyses you want by uh, defining uh, load cards. And then for, in this example, I'm just going to be doing a uh, normal modes analysis as, uh, as just as a simple uh, analysis. Uh, so I'm going to actually take the X57 Maxwell simplified uh, model off of the VSP hanger. And I'm going to actually import it directly into uh, M4 Structure Studio. And M4 Structure Studio uh, ha actually has the uh, Open VSP API under the hood. So what we're looking at there is like the actual uh, uh, like surface querying of uh, the model. Uh, so then you lay out sketch points on the Open VSP model. Uh, so, and then in this example, I'm only going to be looking at uh, four components, the wing, the fuselage, uh, and then the vertical and horizontal tail. You could model all those nacelles, but uh, just for uh, simplification, I'm going to be ignoring those. Uh, but I will be adding uh, some non-structural masses for the, outboard, the big outboard motors uh, as uh, for demonstration. Uh, when you're doing this, you only lay out sketch points on half the component. So as you can see, the fuselage, it's only being, uh, the points are only on the port side. And then on the wing, it's only on the top side. Uh, and that's kind of, uh, it's uh, that's because uh, it's, well, I'll get to why that is in a bit on the next slide. But, uh, and then additionally, you for symmetric components, uh, you only have to define it for uh, half, uh, so for only one of those symmetric components. So that wing, I only have to define it for the uh, starboard wing there. So then uh, the next uh, step is to convert that into the sketch model, which is a 2D representation of every component. And as you can see, uh, it's kind of apparent why you only need to define the sketch points on half as it's a 2D model. Uh, and then each, com each component has its own sketch plane, so that fuselage is kind of, you know, a vertical plane while that wing is a horizontal plane. And uh, that lets you uh, define uh, through structures such as ribs and spars on the wing or uh, bulkheads and floors on the uh, fuselage uh, very simply. So the first uh, step is you get all those points from the sketch point layout, and then you uh, define the and then you can see here I've defined the through structure. So the red lines correspond to bulkheads on the fuselage, while the red lines correspond to ribs and spars on the wing. And then here you can see I've uh, added uh, these blue elements for our skins, and that basically means there's going to be structural elements on the OML at those locations. And then I've also added some uh, non-structural masses, which I like the, these uh, orange lines connected to a point, uh, and those represent the rotors in this example. Uh, so then after you've done all that, you basically just click a button and it generates a mesh and all the analyses. And then you can uh, use the tool of your choice uh, to uh, 
view those uh, results. All right, so now I'm going to switch over to the live demonstration. Is this better? All right, good. All right, so yeah, I downloaded the uh, X57 Maxwell from the uh, OpenVSP hangar. I created a folder and just put it in it, and then I've launched uh, M4 Structure Studio. Uh, so to import the model, you can just uh, drag the VSP3 file into M4 Structure Studio. It takes a little bit to load it, but as you can see, uh, we have the OpenVSP model here in M4 Structure Studio, all the components on the left, uh, and you, you can change how it's visualized too, so you can view it as a surface or uh, with the hotkeys, wireframe, I stick with the wireframe. Um, so the uh, first thing I'm going to do is uh, lay out the sketch points for the fuselage. Um, so I'm going to right click on the component in the tree. And I'm going to use the automated fuselage layout tool. Uh, so you first have to choose what the sketch plane is. Uh, I'm going to be choosing the uh, XZ sketch plane and that will uh, uh, course. So that'll let me define uh, bulkheads and floors uh, on that XZ plane. So choose the XZ plane. And then you can choose a number of options. The main one I'm going to focus on are where the bulkheads are placed. And you can choose what uh, parametric value you want the bulkhead to be placed at. You can change these up and down. I'm just going to uh, click through some of these uh, where I want to place the bulkheads. And then I hit confirm. As you can see, all these sketch points have been laid out on the uh, fuselage. Uh, one thing I'm going to do to so this that that automated fuselage layout tool is just a starting point. You can go in and uh, change uh, where these sketch points are. Uh, so one thing that uh, this mo models in M4 Structure Studio tend to like is uh, not to come to a point like this. So I'm going to shift uh, this grid of points uh, half slightly so there's a so they don't come to a point. So I'm going to go to this grid of grid. Uh, component on the left, and I'm going to change the four corners of it. So I'm going to change the U1 value to 0.1, and then the U4 value to 0.1. So that shifted the whole grid back uh, ever so slightly. So now we have, instead of coming to a point, it's uh, these uh, five points here. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the for the uh, aft. I'm going to change U2 to 0.925. U3 to 0.925, and then uh, I'm going to just, so you can see it better, same thing at the back, not coming to a point. Uh, all right, so next I'm going to, uh, so that, that's all the sketch points you need for the fuselage, uh, and those sketch points again will be used to define uh, structural components uh, for, or, and various other things for the fuselage. Um, I'm going to look at the wing now. For the wing, I'm going to use the XY sketch plane. So looking down at it, that'll let me define ribs and uh, spars on the XY plane. So uh, if I go to the clean wing, uh, I'm going to use the automated wing layout tool. Uh, so XY plane, and uh, pretty simple uh, GUI right here. Uh, I'm going to choose nine ribs and uh, just two spars, and then uh, I'm going to shift the, uh, the, these are the parametric coordinates for the leading and trailing spar. Uh, so I'm going to just move those inward a bit. So confirm. As you can see, we now have all these sketch points uh, placed on the wing. Uh, so one thing, uh, I mentioned I wasn't going to model these nacelles, but something uh, that the user is probably going to want to do is have all these sketch points on the wing line up with these nacelles. So I'm going to do that real quick. Uh, So I can go in and change the various uh, columns of sketch points here. And I can change, I can move the like uh, one end of it up and down. Uh, so I'm just going to move th this one down a bit. So it lines up. That one looks fine. Uh, these sketch points, move them up a bit. 
these up. Same with these. Not being too precise here. Uh, and then it looks like I kind of have uh, one too many here, so I'm just going to delete uh, this one, this line of points. And just delete that. And then uh, move this one down. And then these two, these uh, two points out here are fine. All right. So now that the wings are done, uh, not going to do any more work on that in, in the sketch uh, point layout tool. Uh, so now I'm going to look at the horizontal tail and the vertical tail. Uh, for the horizontal tail, it's much like the wing. I'm going to use the uh, uh, wing layout tool, same XY plane. And uh, I'm going to use three ribs, two spars, trailing edge of 2.5, trailing edge of 2.5. And uh, for this horizontal stabilizer, I don't really want to model this uh, weird little structural area back here. So I'm going to uh, shift this grid like I did for the fuselage. And so move it up so it's only really capturing the wing part of the lifting surface. And then uh, I'm gonna quickly space out these points by uh, right clicking on the columns tab and doing using the linear spacing tool. And this lets me define how many uh, columns I want. So I'm going to use four, and then I'm going to space it uh, with their X, Y, Z value. So you can either space it uh, so they're all evenly spaced in the X, Y, Z uh, coordinate system, or you can space them evenly in the uh, OpenVSP UW uh, coordinate system. So X, Y, Z, so now I have these four uh, columns uh, evenly spaced. Uh, and that's good for the horizontal stabilizer. Now for the vertical tail. Uh, I'm going to use the automated wing layout tool again. And uh, I'm going to use the uh, X, uh, XZ plane. So I'm going to do five ribs, two spars, much like uh, the other components. And then, again, I don't really want to model this little area down here. So I'm going to shift the grid up. There we go. Uh, and then I'm going to space out these points uh, differently too. So I'm going to use that linear spacing tool again, uh, seven columns, and I'm going to have them spaced with the UW, and those tend to mat match the uh, kind of discrete uh, airfoil sections better. All right, there we go. Um, and then if I show all, to extents. There is uh, the complete sketch point layout for the um, uh, X57 Maxwell. So the next step is to actually create the uh, sketch model. Um, so we're going to go up and do initialize sketch model. So first you actually have to save the uh, sketch point layout. So I'm just going to call it uh, Maxwell. Save it. And then uh, you can see the four uh, components that we define sketch point layouts for appear here as tabs. And it, there's kind of, you, you also have some options on how you want, to, what like cards you want automatically created when you do the, uh, when you, once the model's initialized. So you can automatically have it add uh, skin elements or uh, beam elements. So these beam, uh, the column, beam to columns means that bulkheads will automatically be created. And then for like the wing, the adding beams to rows and columns mean that both ribs and spars will automatically be created. You can also change the material properties of these things. Uh, so we'll just go into that for the fuselage. So you can choose a different material property for the skins or, or the beams. Um, the beams are just any uh, through structure while the skins are the uh, OML structure. Uh, I don't know, we'll just change this to uh, composite aircraft scan. And then you can also uh, choose, make custom composites or custom shell elements. Um, you can also choose your unit system. Uh, so that's done. Then uh, I'm going to go to the wing. For the wing, um, so the, this column here is the prop layout. So this is 
how many property regions are created for the component. So this uh, skin for every column means that a, uh, a, a, a different property region will be created for every uh, column of skin for elements. Uh, so that's useful for optimization where you want to change the uh, property regions of just a small part of the wing. So you want the inboard sections to be thicker than the upward sections. So I'm going to kind of show how you would, might set that up, but I'm not actually going to be doing optimization. So I'm going to do a um, custom P shell. So, and then I can go in here and uh, edit the values. I could change the material, uh, but I'm going to just stick with aluminum. And then you can change the, uh, so there's the thickness here. So this is the starting thickness of the uh, property region. Uh, but I'm going to also set a lower bounds of 0.01 inches and an upper bound of two inches. So that means these property regions during optimization uh, can go all the way down to 0.01 inch uh, thickness or be increased to two inches. Uh, I'm just going to do done. Uh, I'm not going to really touch the, Vertical tail and horizontal stabilize the default settings for those are fine. Hit create. And it takes a little while. It projects all these points to the uh, 2D plane of the component. And uh, it all, will also automatically create um, all these cards that you see now. Uh, so then, as I was saying, like previous uh, in that previous section, uh, that uh, material cards were automatically created uh, for every component, and then uh, different property regions created. So as I uh, showed you, uh, the I chose uh, composites for the uh, fuselage, so you can see all these different uh, property regions for the fuselage, and then uh, for the wing, you can see. Uh, uh, these property regions, which have those uh, lower and upper bounds for optimization. So you can, each of these sections can have a different thickness value, uh, different gauge when being sized. Uh, so this is just kind of the automatically created cards. Uh, generally, you're going to have to go in and change some of this as it, uh, automation never does exactly what you want. Uh, so the first component I'm going to focus on is the uh, fuselage. So I'm going to just uh, show only in snap two. This just basically shows only this component and uh, snaps the camera to view its sketch plane. Uh, one consequence of flattening this uh, the nose and tail out is that uh, the structure is not closed here. So I'm going to add uh, some beam elements there to close off the nose. Uh, so I'm going to go to structural elements under fuselage, uh, beams. I'm going to open the beam wizard. This basically uh, helps you facilitate creating beam cards um, using the uh, just by clicking in the model. So I'm going to choose uh, what property region I want these new beam cards to have. Um, doesn't really matter. Uh, and then I'm going to use the paver multiple. So this lets you create multiple beam cards at once. Uh, so you choose the starting point and the ending point. And you click. And as you can see, it created this red line between all uh, five of these points. All right, I'm going to do the same thing on the aft. Uh, paper multiple, click on the bottom point, click on the top point, click, beam cards created. Uh, another thing I want to do is all these uh, red lines essentially represent bulkheads, but um, I don't want this many bulkheads, so I'm going to delete uh, a few of them. Done with that. So I'm going to delete... Uh, these 2,000 and 3,000 bulkheads. Delete. Uh, delete the 5,000 to 7,000 bulkheads. So delete these. And uh, I'm just hitting the delete key on my keyboard. Uh, and you can double check what card you're deleting here. Uh, if any of these cards have dependencies, so if you're deleting a property and there's uh, cards that depend on that property, it'll list them here as well, so you can see exactly what uh, the effects of deleting is. But uh, these uh, cards don't have any dependencies. Uh, and then I'm going to delete the 9,000 and uh, 10,000 beams. Delete those. And then uh, finally, I'm going to delete these uh, 13,000 beams. 
Right, there we go. I don't know if that's how many bulkheads the Maxwell actually has, but it's good enough. Um, next, I'm going to work on the wing. So I'm going to uh, show this and snap to. As you can see, the ribs and spars have already been created. Um, but one thing I am going to add is add some concentrated masses for the outboard uh, motors. Um, so go out here, I'm going to do structural elements and attachments, add, add attachment. And then I can go here, click on the card and the newly created card in the model and change its values. Um, so I'm going to change its CG to um, 160. 287. So now we have this point out here, but it's just connected to some random point out, uh, at the center. We don't want that, so we're going to connect it to these four points uh, at the end of the wing here. Um, so I'm going to change these point IDs. I'm going to deselect point one. I'm going to select point 41, 42, 43, 44. There we go. Now we have a, uh, and then I'm going to add some mass to it, say 100 pounds. So now we have a 100 pound mass connected to the end of the wing here. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. So I'm just going to uh, copy and paste this attachment. Uh, so I just created another one over top of it. Uh, I'm going to change the Y value to negative 200. So now it's over here. And then I'm going to uh, change the points to the symmetric points. So instead of 41 through 44, it's 20,041 to 20,044. There we go. Uh, so I could be creating, so these nacelles could have been modeled explicitly with their own uh, components, but I'm just using uh, concentrated masses to model them. And then additionally, uh, all, every single nacelle probably should have had its own concentrated mass in rotor. Uh, but uh, I'm not going to worry about that right now due to uh, time constraints. Um, so I'm just going to so I'm just going to leave it to just those two uh, concentrated masses. All right, um, and then show all. I don't really want to change anything in the uh, horizontal or vertical tail, but as you can see, there's structure uh, already created for them. Uh, the next step is to determine how all these components are merged together. So, um, and then the first step within that is to determine the order in which the components are merged. So if you go up to the merge steps and do the merge wizard, uh, it lets you choose uh, two components. So, the, and these are the first two components that are gonna be merged together. So I'm gonna merge the fuselage to the wing. So as you can see the fuselage and wing, you hit next, and then you have this fuselage wing component. So then that's going to be merged to the horizontal stabilizer next, and then those three components are going to be merged to the vertical tail next. Uh, and then you hit finish. So as you can see, three new merge steps were created. So just to reiterate, the first merge is between the fuselage and the wing, and then those two components are merged with the horizontal stabilizer, and then those three components are merged with the vertical tail. Uh, the order isn't that important for merging this vehicle, except you probably don't want to start by merging the uh, horizontal tail to the wing, for example, as they don't uh, touch. Uh, and then, so the next step is to determine how all these things are merged together. Uh, so we're going to be using a, a stiff spring method a rigid uh, card to merge them to get all these components together. But in order to do that, you need to create attachments uh, where they're going to be merged together. So. I'm going to start with the fuselage and wing um, uh, attachments uh, for the fuselage. I'm going to add an attachment. Uh, and it's going to be at 160.090. So it points the point about there. And then I want to have it connect to points uh, 59, 60, 61, 62. So that's the four points here. And then I want uh, 76, 77, 78, 79. Oh, I need to remove that first point. All right, so then we have this connection here uh, for the fuselage where it's connected to these eight sketch points. And that basically means uh, it'll be connected to the, uh, uh, the elements created in the FEM at those sketch points. Uh, 
And then I'm going to do the same thing for the wing. So I'm going to create a, a uh, new attachment for the wing. And I'm going to put this at the same location as the fuselage attachment. So 160, 0, 90. So it's on top of it. And then I'm going to connect it to the wing points uh, 1, 2, 3, and 4. OK. All right, so now we have that wing attachment. And then we have the uh, fuselage attachment. Now we're going to uh, add a spring, a rigid connection between them. So under merge, fuselage, clean wing, we can add a stiff spring method, add rigid. And then we want to attach fuselage attachment three to clean wing uh, attachment four, as that was the newest one we created. All right, so now the fuselage and the wing are connected. Uh, one other thing that I am going to do is at this uh, fuselage attachment, I'm just going to add a um, thousand pounds to represent more non-structural masses that reside in the fuselage, like batteries. Again, it, probably not in the correct location, but it's uh, close enough uh, for this model or for this example. Um, and now I need to do that same uh, attachment connections for the fuselage and the two tails uh, components. So for the fuselage, I'm going to add another attachment. Uh, two, zero, 7.5. That's attachment about there. And then the points, I'm going to choose 16 and 17, and then 84 and 85. So to those uh, four corners. Uh, and then I'm not going to add a mass to this one. Um, so the next, I need to do it for the horizontal stabilizer. I'm going to add. I'm going to do it at the same location. Do that. And then I'm going to attach this to um, uh, both sides of the horizontal stabilizer here. So points one, two, three, four. And then uh, one, two, three, four again. So now it's connected to the, the, both sides of the horizontal stabilizer. Uh, now I'm going to do the same thing for the vertical tail. Attachment add. Um, and then I'm going to connect this to uh, points one, two, three, and four. So that's just the bottom of the vertical tail. All right, and then I'm going to connect all these attachments together. So uh, I'm going to connect the fuselage attachment five to horizontal horizontal stabilizer attachment six. And then here again, uh, fuselage attachment five to vertical tail attachment seven. And then you can change the spring value if you want, but I'm going to just keep that con uh, at the default. All right, so uh, right now that all the structural models uh, for this, for this demonstration, the uh, structural model is done. Uh, there's a lot of things I didn't include in this demonstration simply because of uh, time reasons. But like, for example, for the wing, uh, you can add aerodynamic elements such as uh, aeroplanes or control surfaces. Uh, you can add uh, frames, landing gears, fuel tanks, uh, and many other things, or more detailed. Uh, uh, structure. Uh, but, all right, so now we're merged. All right, and then the last thing I want to do is by default, a normal mode analysis is created, and uh, you can choose how many modes uh, you want to be uh, analyzed. I'll increase this to 25. And then one other thing I'm going to do is add a parameter to the analysis, uh, param weight mass, and I'm basically just telling the uh, analysis tool what uh, unit system I'm using. So inches per second per second, or inches second, second, yeah. Um, all right, so that's all done. Uh, one other thing I'm gonna do is just so this runs faster, I'm going to change all the, uh, uh, the meshing parameters. So right now the meshing size is two, so that means the element sizes will be two inches. I'm going to increase this to 20, so a very coarse mesh. Uh, and then I'm going to do this for uh, every 
uh, component. Finish that as 20. Mesh size 20. Vertical tail, modeling properties, mesh size 20. So now every component has a mesh size of 20. So it'll, it'll be very coarse, but it'll run very quickly. Uh, so now we, so now the model's complete, and then we just have to hit this button, and then the FEM will be created with all the through structure and uh, analyses. So just going to create a folder, BDFs, open it up, select folder. As you can see in the uh, log, I don't know why I didn't make it full screen earlier, it's currently meshing the fuselage. Uh, now it's meshing the wing. It's going through every skin element and beam element. Uh, now it's working on the horizontal stabilizer, it's the vertical tail, and then once all those components are uh, meshed, it works on merging them together and then cleaning up any uh, poor uh, elements of poor quality. Uh, this should go pretty quick, and then it's uh, done. And for us, it's FEM complete, and we can actually do a preliminary look at the uh, FEM within the tool. I'm going to change this to surface view. So as, you, as I mentioned, um, the uh, mesh is very coarse. Uh, you can obviously make the uh, mesh finer if you'd like. Uh, and then we can actually compare this to the uh, OML previously uh, uh, from the, uh, that we've been using from uh, OpenVSP. Uh, but right now, uh, I'm going to then, uh, so this just created the FEM and the analysis. The next step is to actually run the analysis. So I'm uh, going to use this run NASTRAN button. And then uh, just select this case one, one of three, which was that normal modes analysis. Run NASTRAN. NASTRAN job complete. Hopefully that ran okay. Um, no fatal messages, so it looks like it ran. Uh, so then I'm going to be uh, pulling up uh, Pi NASTRAN GUI, which is an open source tool for viewing um, uh, NASTRAN BDFs and results. Uh, also developed as a side project by someone here at uh, M4 Engineering. Um, so I'm going to go to uh, Maxwell BDFs and load this case. Here's our model. Um, and then I'm going to uh, change the transparency of this so you can see see some of the through structure. Um, so you can see these bulkheads created in the uh, fuselage, and then you can see these uh, ribs and spars created in the wings. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to show was uh, the optimization divine design variable regions. So if you remember, I had set lower and upper bounds for the wing uh, property regions, uh, and you can see all those different property regions here. Uh, but also, like I said, no optimization for sizing was actually performed, so uh, these design variable regions weren't used. But it just uh, kind of a demonstration of how easy it is to create all these uh, design variable regions. Uh, for sizing your structure. Uh, so then next, I'm just going to load the uh, results. And uh, so these are the normal modes. Uh, uh, first few, uh, there's the first uh, wing bending mode. Uh, and then we can actually just animate this for fun, create animation. See how the uh, how the normal modes for this uh, vehicle looks. Uh, all right, and then uh, one final thing I wanted to do was uh, show off the uh, weight statement generator in uh, M4 Structure Studio. So if we go back to uh, M4 uh, and we click the uh, weight statement, generate weight statement, we can select this case one uh, 103, generate weight statement. And it'll show you um, all, like a structural and non-structural breakdown of all the weights in this uh, model. So again, this model wasn't sized, so none of the structural values really mean anything. Right. But you can see the uh, 
1,000 pounds, we added to the fuselage plus the 200 pounds for the uh, outboard rotor motors that uh, I added. You can also see the center of gravity, the CG location. And then you can also see uh, the different regions. So you can see that like all the uh, skins of the wing weighed 403 pounds or all the uh, ribs and spars weighed uh, 17 and 41 pounds respectively. And then you can actually uh, look at every uh, property region as well uh, by itself. And then if you had run optimization, there'd be, there's a column here for uh, running the, uh, for the optimized values as well. Uh, all right. And so that's kind of the end of my demonstration. Just to kind of reiterate, this wasn't a so much, a, you know, how to make the best model in M4 Structure Studio. It's just to really demonstrate how uh, quick and easy it is to make a uh, full FEM model of a, uh, from a, of a vehicle created in, uh, Open BSP. Thanks, Thomas. Uh, and then uh, I think one thing I wanted to leave you with is uh, we're going to do, I guess, any questions if anyone has them live. But if you want to email us any questions, you can email either myself or Tyler at uh, these emails. Or if you want to inquire about actually purchasing uh, M4 Structure Studio XGen, um, you can email uh, Dan at Beer. Thomas, thanks a lot for that. Um, yeah, really impressive to see the progress you guys have made year to year, and I think this is extremely cool to see what's possible using the API and writing an application with VSP under the hood. So, really cool to see that. Um, definitely a uh, power user of the API, and frankly, one who. Uh, next questions and you must just it's either easy or you figure things out on your own so kudos to you uh thank you there's one question on the um on the io list for you okay. uh someone just said this looks great for uniform structures but what about cutouts that cross longerons and bulkheads that are cut into so anything for that uh, so we do have a capability for making partial depth structures, and um, it's not the, uh, I'll be honest, it's not the greatest capability, but it's there, like you can make it work. Um, uh, but that is definitely something we want to focus more on in the future. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Tyler, you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I would just add that, um, well, we also have that damage capability, so under, for, as part of one of the tasks for the Army, they wanted uh, a damage damaged capability where you could damage the structural properties, and and you can actually kind of use that in a in a in a, a way such that you you can basically set it to a damage. It'll it'll intersect the mesh with a primitive um, object like a cylinder, for example, that you specify, and and that will could, could create holes. So that's kind of a maybe a slightly awkward, but but way to do it with the current capabilities um, that are in the tool now.